way you can die. The only way they could co-opt the programming that was essential and first and archetypal to your being. The very fact that you know you are God means that you cannot die from some little microbe. There are mitigating circumstances to the degeneration of God's temple. And you can't just catch it from getting some pussy or some dick. That's bullshit. <laughs> and finally, we're going to talk about what the white man believes is his new outlet, his new territory of, uh, for overcoming. He knows it's his last days. And you know, you, you know, sometimes when you know the, the old champion is walking out, you feel kind of sorry for him. You know, even, 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 you begin to see the criminal getting his at the end and you say, well, I guess that's the end. It's over. But now, we hear about the human genome, a genome project and shit just gets resuscitated. And you start saying, oh, we got more help now because the white man has found a new way to battle disease. Oh, man, oh, man. When we gonna give up this bullshit dependency on everything this man said? Turn off the damn television. Turn off the TV. The myth conceptions, I will start with part two first before I work to somatic death. But somatic death really is what covers everything. And you will find out what somatic death is. There is no natural death. That's a contradiction in terms. That's an oxymoron. Because even the tree comes back to life when conditions dictate it. You look at winter, quote unquote, and you see the tree die. But the tree doesn't die. The tree simply goes through a phase and then rephases back into what you perceive as life. This is what you do now, but that was a choice. You can stay in the body as long as you want because you are the highest, the most developed, the most sentient of all the most highest creations because you are the most high. Most high just folded over on itself and bang, here we are. So why are you dying? Why are you aging? Why are you getting sick? First things first. The biggest mind fuck going on today is that there's something called disease. Disease is superstition. And I'll tell you why. Because the average man and the average woman has no clue as to the workings of nature. And I wrote things down because I have a lot to say and I just don't want to just talk out the hair. So this will go on tape because it came straight through me through what I felt, through what I researched, and I offer this to the masters gathered here who are in the process of remembering. It is the fragmentary concepts of medical science that has misled us for nearly 500 years. Now, with the so-called alternative health crusade of the new age, the fragmentation continues. First, the body is a whole and complete unit of cosmic intelligence, not a series of parts sliced together to simulate life. To understand the true nature of health and healing, we must stop viewing the body temple the way the cave scientist tells us to, as a series of fragmented parts containing organs and systems. There are no systems or organs as we have been made to understand and overstand. This is fragmentation based on commercialism. The definition of the body parts by medical science are the medical church's definitions of your temple that exists in reality only on paper. 
I wonder if you're going to be able to get next to where we're going. There are no such things as body systems. These parts that have been identified are simply definitions of a church that exists only as abstracts on paper. These organs and systems are medical abstracts, codes of the medical church, like sacraments, rituals, saints, demons, and instruments of the Christian church. There are no parts to the body. That is an illusion. There are no systems, organs, or vessels, but outer expressions of an integrated whole. Again, this fragmentary perception of the body temple enhances our false notions that we can apply a separate remedy to that isolated part while the whole remains unaffected. That is the height of white Chalcasian thinking. As a result, when a healing crisis occurs, we think that we have to go ballistic like the Caucasian does. So what do we do? We seek potions. We seek remedies. We seek medications. We seek vitamins. We seek herbs. The very word healing implies health. In fact, disease is actually an expression of health. Healing does not begin when you feel the first symptoms of your imbalance. Let me say that again. Healing does not begin when you, on the surface, feel your first sense of the imbalance. Healing does not begin when you take herbs, potions, or tonics. Healing does not begin when you take herbs, potions, or tonics. By the time you feel your first symptom, you are already midway to the final stages of your cleansing and healing. Taking anything other than natural energy from the air, water, and the sun at this time is tantamount to interfering and stopping a healing process that cosmic intelligence had already begun. Disease is not life-threatening. There is no such thing as a life-threatening disease. Cancer is not life-threatening. The only time cancer becomes life-threatening is when the doctor begins to stick and prod at what nature has consolidated and isolated to protect the total body. It is when man interferes that he begins to die. Life needs no help in the operation of life. The medical priest is conditioned and trained to see germs and viruses as the cause of what ails humanity. Germs and viruses are actually the demons of the medical church. But disease is actually intelligence at work. Disease is self-limiting. But enter the new age. Now you say the new age, now we're going alternative. We're going to do the alternative thing. I'm not going to follow the regular orthodox church. I'm going to do something that's alternative. But let's investigate what's alternative about it. Because I am a refugee from that thinking process. The stepchild of the medical church is the alternative health community. It too is commercially driven all on the fuel of false promises and commodities. Western medicine prompts and promotes the concept of pharmaceutical targets. Well, New Age medicine prompts and promotes vitamin and herbal targets. They both fragment the body into targets for therapy. The New Age also advertises health in a bottle. These are the ballistics of health, they call it. Those various physiological systems identified as the nervous system, the muscular system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the reproductive system, the lymphatic system, the endocrine system, only exist as a percentage.